yesterday we were seeing what the ocean currents so starting all those parts of ocean currents we studied and how does the what type of forces are acting on all those the ocean currents so in that ocean current different types of forces we studied first we saw about the ocean movement ocean movement we have the vertical type and horizontal type in vertical we have the tides means vertically how it is taking places that is happening because of the gravitational pull okay and horizontal it is happening due to due to the frictional force of the wind so that everything part we saw then what is mean by ocean current what is mean by drift what is mean by stream that also we saw stream is what it's in that water it should have the greater volume and speed of that current should be high so that is known as the stream and drift means what when the current is deflecting into two directions means what like uh, when the there is a bifurcation between both these parts so it is divided into two parts so there the drift happens then ocean current means what flow of water in a particular direction so that is the ocean current then in ocean currents we saw that warm current that is also known as the surface current and cold current is also known as the sub surface current and in the surface current we have that occupies only 10% volume of the all those water bodies and deep water that is sub surface current that totally consists of 90% volume then we saw that cold cold current moves from pole to equator whereas warm current moves from equator to pole so that pole to equator means what see the study we saw about it so suppose if this is our earth this is our earth we say that at this boat the pole part we have the cold air means what you can say we have the glaciers in this both part at the pole area so from the cold all those cold current if water is flowing from this side that means what equator to sorry pole to equator it will be coming so pole to equator it will coming so what that cold water is coming so that is the cold current and warm current is what you all know that sun sun light that insulation is directly over at this tropical part and equator part so here water is getting heated and after it when the wind is blowing then it is flowing towards the pole part so warm current flows from equator to pole okay my slide changing no sir now is it changing no sir okay now confirm whether it's changing or not yes sir no changing sir okay thank you okay see so cold current means what that is moving from pole to equator and warm current is moving from equator to pole pole and that cold current is sub surface current and it also sinks that means what it is descending so it is sinking okay and warm current is a sur surface current that is a then forces responsible for the formation of ocean currents that also we saw primary forces and secondary forces primary forces we have the insulation that heating by the solar energy wind gravity coriolis force then secondary for forces we have temperature difference and salinity difference so temperature difference is what if warm water is what it will be floating okay it will be less denser so it will be floating off of some uh, some water which is little bit have which have the lower temperature than the that surface current and salinity is what if water is saline so that's as the salinity increases that water density also increases so in this way all those cold water they will be settling down so in this way the salinity also affect the ocean currents then primary forces all those forces we saw and influence all this we saw about the wind circulations then types of ocean currents we have the old and warm ocean currents then influence of coriolis force that how you can understand that if we see the when we are studying about the belt so when we are studying about the belt there what we study during the study of the belt we study that in the wind if the wind is blowing from high pressure to low pressure so in this case this tropical area what happened now it was blowing fully state and there what happened due to the coriolis force it deflected towards the eastwards means not that much but it deflected towards the eastwards so in the northern hemisphere because of coriolis force we have the wind deflection in the rightwards and in the southern hemisphere we have the leftwards so because of that now since wind is affecting the part of water so that means what that because of that wind movement current also will be affected so in that way coriolis force affect the ocean currents okay
then we saw about the secondary forces temperature difference and salinity difference and see remember that water with high salinity is denser than the water with the low salinity and similarly cold water is denser than the warm water so that everything is done and denser water what happens they tend to sink means what they will be flowing in the soft surface area the down area while the lighter water tends to be rising so that everything we saw now see now finally we will study about the see this about the phytoplankton and fishing all those parts while studying the tent in the mid part we will see okay so last page we will go there we will see about the different currents first we will see the different currents of pacific ocean sorry first we will see about the atlantic then we will see about the pacific ocean okay so see here now this is the currents of atlantic ocean so see here how first we saw the phenomena that if if it is cold current cold current means what cold current means it will be coming from pole to equator okay it will be coming from pole to equator so by this you all can easily understand if you see the diagram okay so cold current will be coming from pole to equator remember this one and warm current means what from equator towards the pole it will be going so equator to pole will be warm current so now see here now in the mid part see this is the north america this is south america and this is africa and this part is the europe part okay so now see here in this part what it is it is happening now from this we have the equatorial current okay equatorial current we have here so in this part what it is happening when we have the equatorial current so because of that first you will see you will see the north equator and south equatorial current wait let me take take you to that page so see here in this case in this diagram see we have the equatorial current here okay when equatorial current see now we have the equator here and at the equator we all know that wind will be moving towards the that is the north easterly trade winds okay north easterly trade winds and if you see the diagram that trade winds so it will moving towards the west from the eastern side it will moving towards the west okay so similarly now when we have the strong wind at the equator part okay so you all know that from the equator if current is flowing means what it will be the warm current and you all know that why it is warm because at the equator you have the highest insulation so because of heating of the water now with here this part becomes hot now when this part becomes warm so because of strong winds flowing of a strong winds what will happen because of flowing of a strong winds from these parts water will flow okay now when the water flows this is the equatorial current okay when the water is flowing so there what will happen when the water is flowing so there what happen now when it touches the this land area when it touches the land area after this it is no way to go so that time what will happen it will divide into two direction one is this direction it will deflect okay and another one is the this direction so one is so that's that kind of the known as the north equatorial current okay and that is which is going in the southwards that is known as the south equatorial current okay so now see it is going from equator to pole so that means it is a warm current and when the that water is touching heating the this ground so here what will happen now again it will come back so that when the, it is coming back that is known as the counter equatorial current okay now when the two branches have got created and this counter equatorial current will be on the same equatorial current place okay now here what happened two branches have got separated so this here we have the north equatorial current that is going in the north america side okay and then we have the south equatorial current that is going in the brazil side okay so remember we have the brazil here then as we go down we have the argentina and all these parts so here it is going towards the brazil and south south southern hemisphere so it is known as south equatorial current okay now here we have the brazil current okay after when the south equatorial current diminishes so there what happens from there the from in the brazil part from there that that current warm current is going on so that in from which current which is going from the brazil side that is known as the brazil current so remember so brazil current is 
remember this diagram okay so that it will be easy to recall see by this you can remember that brazil current is it is going from equator to pole so it is a warm current and here also it is a north equatorial current is a warm current okay now see here. now what is happening we have the best wind drift okay so best wind drift what is happening that is happening because of wind okay that is happening see here we have the equator then down part this is zero degree means what here we will be having like 23 and a half degree that is tropic of capricorn area okay so their tropic of Cap capricorn will be there then after that you all know that westerly wind blows okay so that westerly wind wind which is blowing so that is what that is also the whole current okay here it is 23 and a half so here we have the the temperature here we have the height then after it as we go so there again we have the westerlies westerlies and then after that we have the easterlies wind so as we go near the pole area so we have the easterly then we have the polar polar wind okay so here what is happening you all know that you all know that easterly wind now down part we saw that we have the down part you all saw that we have the west wind drift okay because it is coming from the west side okay so here what is happening is there if you draw the this trade winds diagram so here easterly wind will be blowing towards the this way okay so in this uh, southern hemisphere so it will be blowing towards the, this way so it is coming from the west okay so it is not a west okay and this part particular that west wind drift that particular part is in the easterly side okay it is like that west wind drift is blowing in blowing in the above 66 degree or you can say 65 degree so there that wind is blowing so that will be the cold current because here you can see that wind is coming from the pole side okay so because of that current is cold so that whole current is the this part west wind drift then from see equator from equator towards the pole it is going so we have the parkland current in this part and we have the another current that is another Venguela current that is going in the south africa area it is going from equator uh, pole to equator so that is the coal current so this is in the southern hemisphere these are the currents in of the atlantic ocean in the southern hemisphere so remember this part now we will see about the atlantic ocean currents in the northern hemisphere so see in the northern hemisphere when you see the all those currents so see here when we see what happens when the north equatorial currents moves so north equatorial currents we have here okay so north equatorial currents after it when it reaches this part this here panama canal area this part when it reaches that current is named as the antilles current okay it reaches the caribbean sea area here caribbean sea area even the caribbean current is also here okay that is also the warm current so here we have the antilles current again here what happens here we have the also we have the Florida current and because Florida current we have here and after it what is happening here water is mixing is happening here okay water is mixing happening here and after it what is happening that Florida current because of this here here we have the land part so here what is happening it is getting deflected towards the this side then we have the Gulf stream why this is known as the Gulf stream see we have studied that if we have the larger volume of water larger volume of water larger volume of water that is larger okay larger volume of water and high velocity and why it, it will have the high velocity see here from here we have the here, here we have the already two currents joining and is coming here okay and from the pole part towards the equator labrador current is coming okay then again east greenland current is coming what is happening these both current and this warm current they are joining at these places okay so when they are joining at these places so wind that is blowing so that is one of the gulf stream here two currents are joining so here all these particles are known as the gulf stream so when the when this four currents are joining here so because of that what is happening high large volume of water it is having and because of that wind velocity also increasing so here we have the gulf stream then the same gulf stream that is when it is going into this part so here what is happening it is y percolating into two parts so here see here we have the north atlantic drift 
so it is going straight so it is like going this path so here we have the north atlantic drift and another one what is norwegian current so this is see in russia part you all know that in the russia that is full of ice caps okay but then also that is full of ice caps but then also in the northern side here we have the coastal area why we have coastal area because of norwegian current norwegian current is going and flowing there so because of warm current there melting of ice caps are happening so because of that what is happening because of warm current there are no melting there are no solid ice crystals on in those part where warm current is flowing okay so remember norwegian current we have the frozen current and this current so these are all parts of these are all the parts of which current warm current then again see here from this part what is happening here when this gulf is happening then from here this atlantic drift here we have the norwegian current also then here again from this part because of gulf is seen only what is happening here we have the emergence of cold current that is the cambridge current okay so cambridge current now in this center what is happening see here we have the like formation of this side shape like a circular shape you can say okay and here at this place at this place you will be finding the bermuda triangle okay and you all were seeing that that if ship goes there or if flight goes there it gets things okay why because of these types of force see first these types of formation are on the dyad if that four currents are joining from all those sides here and this current gulf stream atlantic drift cambridge current here there is not even so it is forming like a circular shape so that particular shape is known as the guide okay so this is the guide so in this part only what is happening in this part only we have the sargasso sea and why it is named as the sargasso sea because sargasso is a weed we can say yeah weed it is a like a invasive species not invasive species it is a species it is like a plant okay it is like a plant it is a we can see when you grow the like crop crops like rice or wheat or anything so inside that rice crops also some weeds will be growing okay so this is of not a, not of any use okay but only they will be like you can say you can say it is like a algae type okay so here these weeds are there so because of that weeds that is weeds name is the sargasso so because of all, all that weeds what is happening here that gyre is formed so in that gyre that it is full of this sargasso weed so because of that we have named it as the sargasso sea so now in this part remember about the all those currents so if you remember the diagram you can easily say that from which part if it is flowing from the equator to pole that means warm current and pole to equator means that is the cold current so remember about this one and just go through the map and see all those diagrams so you can easily recall this then we will see about the pacific ocean current see here. now in this part you can see here here what we have the south america north america we have see here we have the equatorial current flowing so because of that we have the deflection so northward and southward in the southward current that is brazil current okay and the northward current is going it is on the antilles then here we have the florida current and for antilles and florida currents they are joining and at from the polar part from the pole part where the labrador labrador current coming so they are joining they are forming the gulf stream okay here means what here volume is increasing and after it what is happening when the north atlantic drift when this warm current is forming is happening so norwegian current is emerging from that side and then again from this place we have the canary current this side okay so because of that canary current and this part so that is known as the drift so here in this part while canary current is a cold current okay and because of this what it is forming like a circular area. so this part is known as the gyre current so remember all this part so these are all the all of the currents in the parts of atlantic ocean so remember all these currents so see here even in the this part i have mentioned so see here so see here if circular that formation happens that means the so remember that if all four currents means all from the all sides if currents are coming so there the gyre function is happening then similarly in the pacific ocean similarly in the pacific ocean also we have the formation of 
kind to so see it. In this Pacific also, we have the counter that equatorial current, counter equatorial current. Then when it is heating, there we have the north equatorial and south equatorial current. Okay. So what is happening? The south equatorial current in the Australian part, if you see, when that south equatorial current going there in the Australian part and it is deflecting. So that part is in the east Australian current. Okay. And the same north equatorial current when it is going and deflecting towards the northwards, that is known as the Kurosio current. Okay. And don't get confused with the base in drift. Okay, west wind drift, even you can see in the Atlantic Ocean also, so Pacific Ocean also. So don't get confused and must remember that west wind drift is a cold current. Only thing you remember this part, okay. And no need to remember that whether it is in a Pacific or Atlantic, it is in a both, okay. And west wind drift is a cold current. Now see, east Australia current we have, then from the equator we have the south Pacific current. And see, at this part in the Peru, Part. Here we have the Peru part. Here we have the Peru part. So there we have the Peru current and it is going from pole to equator. That's why it is a cold current. Okay. Now see, see here we have the Kurosio current and from this side we have the Okusta current coming. That is a cold current. Then again from this OCO. So from there also cold current is coming. Okay. So here they are joining. Here they are joining and there see. Kurosio current is, they are not joining, here these both currents are joining, here what is happening, see, here these parts where, see, remember one part, where the, there is a joining of cold current and warm current, cold plus warm current, that means what will happen, there, that zone will be good for the fishing, okay, good for the fishing, because why, because here we have the mixing of maximum sea resources, okay. So here I have like a, here all those parts will be coming, all those phytoplankton because of all those movement, wind drift, so all those parts will be coming and cold currents, all those low in the, all those animals or mammals that is, uh, or feces that is, that is moving the cold current, that also particular things will come. So these parts are good for the fishing, okay. So these parts are the fishing zone. And some parts will study that even Peru current is a fishing zone. So there we'll see why it is a fishing zone. Here we'll see in the when we study with the Lani and El Nino. So these are all the warm currents. Then in, again we have the Alaska current. Okay. So that Alaska current is also the warm current. And again California current that is a cold current. We have this side. So again here you can see there is a formation of Gaia. Gaia here this part. And this part also we have the formation of Gaia. So remember how the formation of gyre is taking places, okay? And remember, see, in the slides, we have the even the definitions of all these parts. So see about that also. Then we'll see about the currents in the Indian Ocean. So see here, this is the part of Indian Ocean, okay? So see here, here in this part, we won't have this equatorial current, all these currents, okay? Here in these parts, we have one is South Equatorial current, and then you all know that Monjabuki current is there that is blowing from flowing from equator towards the poles. Then Agalas current we have. Okay. Then only waste wind drift only. Some currents are there in the Indian Ocean. So remember just remember the name. So that's enough for and remember that mostly remember that in the Indian Ocean we have most you can see how the formation see here. We have the formation of gyre in this both parts. And all those currents are mentioned in this part. So remember all those currents name. See now from see some of the some definition of the particular currents are given in this part so just go through all those slides so see we will see about the some uh, mixing zone that is cold current and warm current mixing zone so see here that mixing zone of cold and warm ocean currents grand banks that is a good zone for the fishing then cold water of failing zones Peru coast see why a failing is happening in this part that we will see okay See here, we all saw that, suppose if this is the part of South America, okay. So here we have the Peru current, okay. And in this side we have the Australia part, okay. So here what is happening, this is the equator part. Here what is happening, in the equator part, we have the warm wind blowing. So trade wind is blowing from this side, means what? It will take the warm water from this side to this side. 
okay now when it is taking the warm water to acidic side so there what will happen cold water from cold sur that sub surface water that will come this side when it will come this side so that time what will happen all those fishes all those phytoplankton that all it will be brought here in this area when it will brought so for eating also fishes big big fishes will come here so because of that it is known as the good fishing zone okay so see here phytoplankton are the primary producers in the marine food chains and hence they are called as the grass of the sea see and phytoplankton you all know that that is a plant type only but they are very microscopic in nature okay so some species of algae are large multicellular and live on the ocean bottom and they are insignificant players in the marine ecosystem compared to the phytoplankton so as the only in which a narrow zone and around the coast so now in this grand banks you can see grand banks at which place you can see if you see the map of that uh, we saw the gulf stream there gulf stream in the atlantic ocean then labrador is coming from the upwards so there we have the grand banks area okay so that area is particular good for the fishing zone so the two cold currents east greenland current and labrador current so there in we saw that two cold currents is coming from uh, upwards okay flowing from the arctic on the ocean into the atlantic ocean then labrador current we have that is going to the part of the east coast of canada and miss the warm gulf stream so when the meeting of warm gulf stream happens so there is a confluence of two currents because of that one hot and one other one is cold so because of that it is famous for the fox so that fox around the new foundland and here only you will be finding the bermuda triangle and because of that fog only what happens see there will be like huge amount of fog formation and because of that what will what is happening people are not uh, even that pilots they are not able to see okay so if because of that case what is happening either it is crashing okay and if no other flies coming from the other direction so okay then they are, they are going safe otherwise because of that issue only they are crashing even the ships okay that, that is happening because of fog formation okay then as a result of mixing of cold and warm waters one of the world's most important fishing grounds is created so here you can see that grand banks area here we have the grand banks sorry this is the south america in north america we have the grand banks area and see and why is that cold and warm currents are good for the fishing algae and other plants are able to do the photosynthesis and to produce organic material and the organic materials you know that it will be it will be the building block for all animals high up in the food chain so they will come and eat all those materials so in this case what is happening ocean from their part what is it is derived from the phytoplankton and what is to a laser action the benthic algae so benthic algae don't get complete that is the lower part in the sub surface that is settling down all those plants part okay so that is the benthic algae so there is a fundamental problem phytoplankton in the open oceans to have face to face so they need to what is happening phytoplankton you all know, know that it is a plant so they need both sunlight and the nutrients so in that case because of that what is happening from the down pass cold water is bringing the all those nutrients okay and sunlight we have okay, and there we have the warm plants also so because of that it is becoming one so it is becoming normal for the fishes to live and also the phytoplankton do their photosynthesis so here what is happening sunlight will be available in the upper most layer and during the photosynthesis what will happen nutrient nutrients are quickly used up by the phytoplankton so they are available for the long periods in the upper layer so because of that it is good for the fishing zones and see we have the at anclage current gulf stream all those currents so all those definitions are mentioned in this part so just go through and remember all those currents these parts are important so remember all those parts so that will be easier for you to recall see no okay if you are not if you don't have that much to remember what you do just go through the map in see in the last four to five slides i have mentioned all those currents important currents name so just go through the slides so that you can easily gather your information that this is the warm current this is the cold current and just remember one thing that warm current is what it will be moving from warm current will be moving moving from equator to pole where the cold current will be moving from pole to equator 
So remember only this thing. By these things, if you just see the map, so two to three times if you see the map, then it will be easier to you to recall. So you can easily say that that is a cold current, that is a warm current. Okay. So these are the different ocean currents. And also in this part, remember one thing that which current is flowing in the Atlantic Ocean, which current is flowing in the Pacific Ocean, and which current is flowing in the Indian Ocean. Okay, and what you all do, just go through all those parts and just remember all those which current is flowing in which ocean and see. You can easily recall if some current, if it is in the south part or it is in the eastern part, that everything you can recall if you see the map part, that all those lines we have here. See, like even the portions was there, that Gulf Stream. It is located, you all know that it is located in the Atlantic Ocean. But in which direction it is flowing and from which parts. So they have given it option that West, West Atlantic Ocean, West Pacific Ocean, light options were there. So in that case, you must remember. Okay. So here we have the Western side and see, you can little bit, you can say the Western side and the Northern side. So, so North Western side, we have the Gulf Stream. So remember that. So these are all the parts of ocean currents. So, Norwegian current we saw that because of that only we have the coastal area in the north Russia. So, see here about it. Norwegian current is important as it keeps the ocean to the north of Norway partially free from ice. Okay. And also moderates the extremes of climates. And because of this what is happening, Russia is able to move cargo in the summers through the Arctic Ocean. So, because of that only we have the movement. And see it, that what is happening, the Saudi, the Saudi branch flows through between the Spain and Azores. Remember about the Azores Sea, that is between the which continent, okay. So just go through the map and see, otherwise about the sea part, which sea is in, which parts, that everything I will bring, that border region, that I will put in the YouTube channel or, or I will bring in the class, okay. Then we have the cold candy current, that when that Saudi branch is flowing, so there is the cold candy current. So here we saw that we have the cold candy current, then we have the Gulf Stream. See at this part. Okay. Here what we have? We have the North Equatorial current. Okay. Then here this side we have the Gulf Stream. And cold current is coming from the upper part. And here this side we have the candy current. So because of that, it is forming like a guide. And here we have the North Atlantic Dream. So see here. This current finally joins the North Equatorial current and completing the circuit in the North Atlantic. So because of that, what is happening? That's the Sargasso Sea lying within this circuit. So in that circuit only it is located. Okay. So that Sargasso Sea, what is happening? That is forming like a circuit. Okay. And that forming that is the guide. So it is a full of large quantity of seaweed that is important for the geographical feature. So in that only this system of ocean currents forms the North Atlantic guide. And similarly, we have the South Atlantic Gaia also and in the even in the Pacific also with the formation of Gaia. So remember, so see about the Sargasso Sea, it is mentioned. So Sargasso Sea is what? A sea without a land body. So what is happening? Here there is a formation of Gaia. So because of that only formation of Gaia, we won't have any land body near to it. So it is bounded on the west by the Gulf Stream. Okay, that you can see if you see the map. The north by the Atlantic current, east by the Candy current, and south by the North Atlantic equatorial current. So in this way, remember because of that it is forming a guide. That you can say like it is forming like a circuit. So these are these are all about the different ocean currents. So just remember the names of all the ocean currents. See, even for your all those compartments purpose, I have taken this particular all these things from the Google's. And I have pressure you here. So, see in these all parts, you can easily see that we see the see Humboldt or Peru current that is a whole current. So, that is flowing in which part? So, that is flowing in the South Pacific Ocean. So, remember this South name also because they might give for us for arranging part also. Think Cudid or OSEO current. Remember that that is the cold current, okay? And that is going in the North Pacific Ocean. So, all this everything phenomena are mentioned here. So see here, all those cold currents and warm currents I have mentioned. So these are the cold currents. Okay. These are the cold currents. 
then we have the warm pens. So list of warm pens also are, are mentioned in this part. So, yeah. so see all those warm pens. So I'll save some important kinds name. Just go through all those names. So see yeah, Humboldt or Peruvian kind. Remember this name also. If Peruvian asks, that you must know that is a cold kind and also remember the Humboldt kind name. Okay. Then Curil or Oasio kind. And remember the region. Humboldt that you all can see that Humboldt kind means what? It will be either in the north or south. And you know that Humboldt that Peru current. It is also known as the Peruvian current. And that is showing that Peru is in the South America part. So you can easily recall that it is in a South Pacific Ocean. Okay. So remember that name. Then Curil or Oasio kind. That is in a North Pacific part. You, we all saw in the map side. Okay. There we have the that Oasio kind. That cold kind is coming downwards. And we have the Okochita current. So remember that current also. Then California current. That is also cold current. Then we have the Labrador current, cold current. Then Antarctica surfing polar current. This note to remember. Then we have the Canary current. That is also known as the cold current. So remember all these important currents name. Then Greenland, you all saw that. That is coming from the Arctic Ocean. So it is a cold current. Then Bengalia current, we saw in the South Atlantic Ocean. Okay, that is going and hitting the this part, South Africa part. In in the Africa, that southern part of Africa, there it is going and hitting. So there we have the South Atlantic Ocean. Then Falkland can South Atlantic Ocean. That also we saw. No, remember the monsoon current. Then remember the okay. So these are the important cold currents. These currents no to remember. remember the Somali current if you want. Otherwise, no to remember this Western Australian current, South Indian Ocean current. Yes, Western Asian can remember because in the eastern side we have the warm current and western we have the cold current. So remember this part. And see most of the eastern side flowing current, you can see that is the warm current only. And if it is flowing towards the western side, so it will be cold current. So by this way also you can remember about you can distinguish between the eastern and western Asian current. Then equatorial current, you all know the equator is means it will be warm current only. Then Thurosio current we studied. That is blowing the Pacific Ocean when the North Equatorial, North Pacific Equatorial, Equatorial current is blowing. Then from there we have the emergence of Kurosia current. Then we have the Alaska current, one current. No need to remember these names. El Nino or Sumia, this name no need to remember. Then we have the Florida current. We can see in the Caribbean Sea area. Okay, there have been signed the map that Caribbean Sea area, there we have the Antlich current and Florida current coming and mixing there. Okay. Then because of that, we have the formation of Gulf Stream, where those, all those currents are mixing and also from the upper parts, we have the cold current coming. So that makes, so that taking the formation of Gulf Stream. Then Norwegian current, we have then Antlage and Brazilian current. So these are all the important warm currents. And in this Agalas current, that is in the Indian Ocean, Punjabi warm current, Indian Ocean. And remember that in Indian Ocean, we have mostly all those warm currents. We don't have any cold currents in the Indian Ocean part. Why? Because you can see that Indian Ocean, when we are studying, we saw that Indian Ocean, it is near by the equator area and the, it is near by the equator area. See, if you see the map, here we have the India. So, you know that India, even our Indian country, that lies in the Tropic of Cancer area, 23 and a half degree. Okay? And here we have the equator area. Then we have here the Tropic of Capricorn area. So, in these parts only Indian Oceans are there. So here we have mostly the warm currents in this area. So remember this part. Okay. So these are all about the different ocean currents. Okay. Then we already saw that all those factors that is influencing the ocean currents. So primary forces and secondary forces we saw. So that everything I have mentioned in slides. That will be easy for you to recall yourself if you have study all these slides and see secondary forces, all things I have mentioned. Okay. Then I have also mentioned about the characteristics of the ocean currents. So ocean currents, what are the characteristics? So ocean currents, we have know that uh, warm currents, we have, we have the cold currents. Then how that warm currents, how it is taking place is because of heating. So that in the equator area and the tropic of like Cancer and Capricorn area. So there we have the direct solar surface insulation. So there because of that we have the warm currents. So there and from the higher latitudes, we all know that cold currents is coming. So in that way, you can study all these parts and what are the effects that if two currents are mixing then we have the temperature temperature inversion also 
we have the climatic conditions because of that we have the rainfall also so all these formations are happening and fog formation fog formation that uh, bermuda triangle there we studied so all these are the froth all these are the effects of ocean current so remember all those parts and you know that if we have the cold current formation so that said what will happening there we will have the dry part there so that said when the cold ocean currents are coming up there we have the dry part so there we have the formation of desert because cold ocean currents are there so there what will happen cold current is what if water also goes and mixes there so there what will happen that time what air will descend so it will not take any moisture upwards but whereas in the warm currents area we have the high amount of rainfall why because you are not warm air goes upwards it it ascends so it will be taking moisture also with it so there is the cloud formation in the warm current area so because of that we have the high high rainfall in the warm current area and where the cold current is flowing there we have the formation of desert why because of lack of rainfall so these are the effects of all those currents then you all know that if two currents are mixing or if a paling is there so then that is the good for the fishing zone so all these are parts of current so this that's all about the current part now we will study about the other parts we will start we will see about the salinity of the ocean then we will see about the higher, how that el nino and la nina formation is happening in our indian ocean so that part also we will see and then after that we will see about the oceanic resources and also we will see about the unclosed okay so now we will see about the ocean salinity oceanic salinity and the la nina and the el nino okay so can anyone confirm me whether this oceanic salinity and el nino and la nina part is visible to you all or not yes sir it is visible okay okay thank you so see here now we finish about the ocean currents now in this part oceanic salinity will be study and el nino and la nina will study so in this oceanic salinity what you all must know that just you know the concept okay and in these parts you must know the salinity of salinity of particular oceans salinity of oceans or if seas are there then of the seas also why because in in the serious exam they are asking for the arrangement okay they will ask for the arranging for arranging questions are asked like means what which which sea or ocean have the highest salinity okay so in that way they are asking for arrangement like they will give the red sea options then they will give the mediterranean sea options then black sea will be there dead sea will be there so they will give the options and they will ask for the arrangement so see uh, see in this slice all those every parts are mentioned in this slice so there will the study and after it when you go home it, when you revise yourself then remember all this sea salinity parts okay and how those salinity are happening that we'll see here okay so here slides are changing slides are changing someone confirm me no sir no sir okay one minute one minute okay now changing yes sir yes sir okay so see here now we'll see about the oceanic salinity so in the oceanic salinity see salinity is means what that if salt that content of salt is there so that particular you know the salinity so salinity is the term is to define the total content of dissolved salt salts in the sea water okay and how it is calculated so see salinity is calculated in the ppt even when you have done the chemistry practice there you would have seen about the ppt so here that means what see you all know that salinity if you measure that will be salt if you are measuring will be measuring the gram or kilogram only okay so here what happens salinity means what mixing of salt plus water so salt content plus water is there okay so there what happens how much salt is there okay how much salt is there in the 1 liter okay so that means what salinity you can take in the if you take into kilogram so that means what 100 gram per liter so in that way salinity per liter so in that way salinity measurement is happening so in this because of these parts what we have done that we have mentioned that see you know that we 
some small amounts, even you can see like uh, little small amounts of salts are present. So because of poor that measurement, we are we were not able to measure into the grams. So we measure in the parts per thousand. Okay, parts per thousand. So that is one of the unit PPT is the unit of salinity. So amount of salt present in one kg of sea water. Okay, and that is measured in the PPT parts per thousand. And see, see, you all know that if lies, if symbol is that is the percentage. And for salinity, if lies is and one more point there, then this is about the salinity symbol. So remember this symbol also and PPT parts per thousand. In this unit, it is measured. Then next we'll see. See, salinity it, it is present in various ways. Okay. So salinity because of salinity difference. We, we have differentiated the types of water. So in those types of water, see even in the fresh water also salinity is available. So in that what is happening, we have mentioned those like amount of, there is a very less amount of salt project in them. So see here, we have de defined the water, we have divided the water on the basis of salinity. Okay. So we have fresh water, we have brackish water, we have saline and we have the brine water. So remember this percentage also. Because it might come for the arranging. Okay. So it will come, it might come for the arranging. So in the face water, we have the 0 to 5 percent of salt. So that much content only there. Then in brackish water, brackish water means what? Like you can see in the Chilka Lake. Okay. So Chilka Lake means what? Like we have with the formation of bars in this part, this part. Okay. And there is a blockage. So only there will be incoming of water and there is water will be here. Okay. And what will happen like even brackish water you can see in the lakes part. Okay. Lakes part also you can see the brackish water. So that is the brackish water. And in the brackish water we have the 5 to 35 percentage salinity. So remember the order. Then we have the silent water. So silent water we have the 35 to 50 percentage salinity. And in the brine water we have the 50 percentage or more salinity. So remember this sequence and the percentage of salt present in all those different waters. So they might ask for the arrangement of all these waters according to their salinity. So remember this all overall percentage. Then see factors which are affecting the salinity. See how salinity will increase and how salinity will decrease. See here, suppose if we have the warm water that is warm current it flowing. So because of warm paint, what will happen? We have the because of warm paint, we have the rainfall. So if the rainfall is coming, so there what will happen? If the rainfall is coming, so there what will happen? When those particles have got all those cloud formation happened on the hygroscopic nuclei. Okay. So what will happen? Because of mixing of water, they will start becoming into the like you can say the pure water. Okay. So when we have the precipitations, so because of that, what will happen when the we have the precipitations coming down. So there we have the 70 decreasing. Okay, why? Because precipitations we we can see they are the mostly the fresh waters. Okay. So because of that, when the fresh water is getting mixed with the salt water, so there will be the 70 decreasing. Then we have the influx of water. If water influx of water from each place, that means you can say from a the river. So all those if a water is coming from those parts, so influx of water. So when it is like you are seeing the Sundar one area here. So there you are seeing that we have the Ganga river coming. We have the Brahmaputra river coming. So when that Ganga and Brahmaputra mixing with those parts near the Bay of Bengal area. So because of that what is happening? That's why we have the very less salinity. Okay. In the Sundra one area only. Okay. So because of that you all saw that why yesterday we were we were studying about the cyclones so in the cyclones we saw that Arabian sea have the Arabian sea have the highest salinity okay Arabian sea have the highest salinity whereas in the Bay of Bengal we have the less salinity why because all the rivers are coming and meeting there so they are bringing the fresh water these parts so because of that salinity is decreasing then if glacier also meets so glacier it meets means what there is the formation of fresh water so when the fresh water is there means it will decrease the salinity then how it will increase so it will increase means if we have the evaporation 
So when we have the evaporation, means what? You all know it. Even if you take, you all would have studied the chemistry practical. When you put the saline water on the hot pan, so during that time, what will happen? Water will evaporate. Liquid that particles will evaporate, and salt will be left over. So salt will be le left over means what? They that will be left at the, that place. Also. So because of that, when they mix with the water, so because of evaporation, we have the increase in salinity. Okay. Then see because of evaporation, we have the mixing of saline water with it, salt with water water. So because of that, salinity increases. Then because of size also, there is a increase in water. Increase in saline water. Why? See, if uh, we have the glacier type. So glacier type, if its size is less, okay. If size is less means what? If it will melt, also means it won't have that much importance. So if the size that glacier that is melting, so it won't have that much effect on this part. And only thing that if we have that freezing part there, okay. So when those parts freezes, so there what will happen? All those parts will get free, free, frozen. Water parts where where the whereas the salt will be left over, so they will mix with the water. So there, what happens if the water freezes? That means what salt content increases. Remember it. If the water freezing happens, so salt content will increase in the like uh, all those ocean parts area. And if the water, if the glacier is melting, then we we have the fresh water. So because of that, salinity will decrease. So remember this part. Then because of locations also, locations means what you all can see, like see, locations means you all know that we are in the Atlantic Ocean, okay, we have the warm water coming through this part, okay, now at this part what will happen, we have the, because of warm water coming this part and we, you all know that warm air, because of that strong winds are there, so it will ascend, so because of that what will happen, we have the rainfall, so when we have the rainfall, so here what will happen, salinity will be decreasing, there because of rainfall we have the fresh water there. So like similarly if we have the cold current, okay, so cold current there what will happen, now all those warm pans have come here this part and cold currents also there is saline, okay. So here there are upwelling happening in this part, so here what is happening, upwelling happening but where we have the cold air blowing this side, so cold air blowing so they will descend, we are studying the wind part. So they will descend. So they will descend means what? There will be no formation of clouds in the troposphere part. If no formation is there, means what? There is no rainfall. So no rainfall means what? Here climate will be like you can say in a dry manner. So when we have the climate in dry manner, no rainfall. So it will be dry. So because of here, salt content will be increasing. Okay. So this is because of location. Then also salt content also increases because of volcanic eruptions. Okay. Why volcanic eruption? Because when we have the eruptions, so downward part you all know that inside even the water is there, and that molten parts, we have the mixture of even the salt particles also. So when we have the volcanic eruptions, when it emerges, so there in the upper part what happens, even the salt content, all those, you all study that sodium chloride, all those particles, they come up and they mixes. So when they mixes with the water, so there, because of volcanic eruptions also, salinity increases. So these are the parts they are affecting the salinity in the ocean side. Okay. Now we will see the next part. So see here, share of different salts. So remember these, this order also. Remember these order also, these are also important. Remember the siege order, siege and oceans order. Okay. Then salinity of water, that fresh water, Remember the salinity of water, fresh water, we studied, then we studied about the brine solution, that highest content of salt, then we studied about the saline water, then we, we also studied about the brackish water. So remember these parts, so first we have less amounts of salt in the fresh water, then we have less amounts of in salt in the brackish water, then we have in the saline water, then highest content of salt is there in the brine solution. So remember these parts also, then these parts also we will see in our slides and then remember these parts also because question have been asked, okay. So like if question comes that salt, which type of salts are present in the oceans. So in that way you can easily call that 
we have the different types of salt in that we have the sodium chloride magnesium chloride magnesium sulfate calcium sulfate in which sodium chloride have the highest amount of salt present in the ocean's water okay so in this way you all can arrange and all the in the slides i have mentioned all the salts salts okay all those salts present in the ocean water so highest amount we have the sodium chloride so that is of the 77.7 percentage okay and because of this one see here all in the coastal area or you can see in the gujarat area there are only we have the producer of salt okay so why there is the oceans there and in oceans see in oceans we have the large amount of nacl and you all know it we eat nacl only okay so sodium chloride we have 70 77.7 percentage there is all those parts they are in little amount okay so magnesium chloride then next comes the magnesium chloride that is 10.4 percentage then we have the magnesium sulfate 4.4 percent then we have the calcium percent calcium sulfate that is of the 3.6 percentage then see all those even in the size also i have mentioned so remember all those orders of this size because this this is also the important part and if you see the previous question paper of the series i can't remember in which year but about the salt project questions have been asked okay so that was the part from the geography only so remember the presence of salt in the ocean so see all those regions also i have mentioned in which regions highest amount of salt is present okay so see suppose if suppose if we have like we have studied that 0 to 5 percent we have the fresh water salt present is there so light means what or oh, you all know that salt content in measure in the parts per thousand so the highest salts we we have in this pond gaffila pond so here we have the 433 ppt so that much salt is remember all those parts okay in this these parts you know remember when we see about the c part they are immersed in remember all those parts okay so salinity of 24.7 ppt have been considered for the brackish water that we always saw and because of salinity we have that compressibility with their thermal expansion with their temperature density with their absorption of insulation with their evaporation with their emitter with their so all those effects also will be happening and because of that what will happen it will be influencing the composition and movements of the sea water also then see here salinity we have this see and see most of the salinity parts you all can find in the tropical area subtropical area why subtropical area see in this part what will happen see in this equator part what is happening we have the heating okay and in this part you all know that we have the convectional rainfall convectional rainfall and here we have the formation of cumulonimbus clouds also so here because of that we have the high amount of rainfall so because of here because of that only that rainfall because of rainfall only we have the decrease in sanity in this equator part where whereas we have the highest amount of sanity in the at the tropic of Capricorn and Capricorn area. That means subtropical area. We have the highest amount of salinity present. So through this diagram, you can easily recall that at the equator we have the less salinity. Why? Because of the rainfall and the high heating of the earth surface. Okay. So the, this was the part of salinity. So see here. Here what will happen? See in these parts here evaporation will be high. In these parts what will happen? In this part also evaporation since evaporation we are and there what will happen there we have the convection rainfall also okay whereas in these parts what is happening we won't, we are not having that much rainfall only the evaporation is happening because of that we have the salinity increases in these parts so remember this part then factors affecting so that all we saw that freezing compressibility all those parts we saw then see in the horizontal distribution of salinity, you, remember, you must remember one point that after C, like after some points, what happens? Salinity suddenly decreases, and after that, when it decreases suddenly, and after that, again there is a little bit decrease, and after that, it will maintain a same amount of salt content in those areas. So, here what happened? Salinity for normal open ocean ranges between the 
33 and 37 okay and then if uh, there is no realm is what their salinity will be increasing that areas then high salinity regions we will be seeing in the land log red sea area okay there it is like 41 ppt and in the matrian sea we have the 38 so remember this so red sea we have the maximum amount of salt present so remember this one this part and then we have the material c that is 38 so remember this part because that is very important for the alignment manner so in that option red sea material c all these options were given so remember this parts then we see low sanity will be there mostly in the all those glacier area see now about all those sanity parts we have mentioned in this part so average sanity of atlantic is 36 to 37 okay then 36 to 37 you can say it is 35 and near the equator there is a heavy rainfall so heavy rainfall is there means what there will be the less sanity in those parts then polar area experiences very little evaporation so there also we have the very less sanity so maximum sanity is observed between the 20 degree north and the 30 degree north so we saw that in the high pressure area only we have the See, remember one thing in the high pressure area only we have the maximum amount of salinity present there. So, in the high pressure area means what? There we saw when we are studying about the belt part, there you can easily recall that in the 30 degree, that 30 to 35 we have the high pressure. Okay. So, through that part also you can cover. So, there we there have the high pressure cells. So, there what is happening? There is a maximum salinity. Then, Indian Ocean salinity is 35. So, remember the salinity order of all these oceans part also. Then marginal sea, all those north sea, see north sea we have the, it requires the highest salinity due to the more saline water brought by the north Atlantic river. Then we have the Baltic sea, that is having the lowest salinity and Mediterranean sea requires the highest salinity due to high air pressure. So remember that red sea we have, then Mediterranean sea, then black sea we have, then remember that Baltic sea, it is having the less amount of salt. So remember all those parts so see all those mixing zones also have mentioned see highest salinity in the water body so lake van in turkey dead sea we have so most that first remember the lake van in the turkey it has the highest salinity then in the dead sea we have then in the great salt lake okay then remember about those all parts we saw that dead sea we saw about the Mediterranean sea okay we saw about the Black Sea, remember these parts also, we saw about the North Sea, we saw about the Baltic Sea. So remember all these sea area also, for arrangement it might be arc. So remember these areas also. Then in the vertical distribution, see, when you have the sudden decrease, that line when it becomes straight, so that particular line is known as the halo line. So remember the halo line, like thermoc line we studied. That temperature difference is there means what? That is the that particular line is the thermoc line. Okay. And halo line is what? Here we have the salinity difference. So that, that is the halo line. So remember these terms. Then we have the see all those see in high altitude salinity increases with the depth. So as we go in the deeper area, salinity will be increasing. And why salinity will be increasing? Because warm water what it will be covering the surface area. And all those cold water is in the low surface area. And because of that subsurface area, what will happen? In the subsurface area, what will happen? In high altitude, what happens? We won't have that much rainfall. So because of it in, in the subsurface area, we have the higher salinity. And in the equator area, we have the lower salinity. So remember that why we have the lower salinity? Because of rainfall only. Okay. So halo line we studied. And similarly, one line is known as the ISO headline. Like ISO bar we studied. If the line joining the same pressure, so that is the isobar. So similarly, if the line joining the same amount of salinity, that is known as the iso line. So remember these terms also. Okay. So now we'll see about the El Nino and the La Nina. So El Nino and La Nina, what is this process? See here. Now we'll see the formation of all these conditions, how all those rainfalls are happening. For that, there are three conditions. Okay. One is normal conditions. See, one is normal conditions. Other one is El Nina and other one is the La Nina. So in the normal conditions, what will happen? See, suppose if you take the area of those, this is the North America. Okay, this is the South America part. Okay, and here we have the Asia part. 
and here you have the exterior part. Here what you have to, you all know that equator is in this part. Okay, equator or you can say in, so equator we have here, here. So there what is happening, here low pressure creation is happening. So low pressure when creation is happening, okay, and you all know that here trade winds will be blowing towards the this way. So and you all know that we have the warm current is upwards. Why warm current we have? Because we have the solar energy in this part. So when we have the direct insulation, so this part will be taking, and because of a strong trade winds, what will happen? All those warm waters will blow towards this area. So when it blows towards this area, so there what happens? Here the cold water comes up. So here when the cold water comes up, so you all know that because of cold water, there will be no rainfall. Means what? Cold water, cold water will be here. Means what? Here cold air also will be blowing. So when the cold air is blowing, means what? There will be no rainfall. So when no rainfall means what? It will be the dry place. So dry means what? Because of that cold place only, we have the formation of desert in this area because of no rainfall. Okay. And similarly, what is happening? Because of trade means when all those warm waters are coming here, and you all know warm air rises. Okay. So when the warm air rises up, so here yeah, what is happening? It is carrying moisture with it. When it is carrying moisture with it, so there is the rainfall. So that is known as the normal conditions. Okay. So that is a normal condition. So see, in a normal year, a surface low pressure develops in the region of northern Australia. Okay. So in the northern parts of Australia, there we have the formation of normal conditions. So there are what happens here. And the high pressure systems over the coast of Peru. So they are in the map, even while setting a current, also we saw that here we have the Peru current flowing. So here we have the cold current here. Okay. So here coast of Peru, what is happening? Here cold see if temperature will less is what? High pressure creation will happen. And if temperature will happen, what? Low pressure creation will be happening. And you all know it, wind blows from high pressure to low pressure. Okay. So wind will be coming towards this side. And when wind will be coming and also the warm water will come, so it will carry moisture upwards. So there we have the rainfall. So a steady flow of the trade winds carries warm surface water westward and bringing the convection currents to Indonesia and coastal Australia. So because of that only we have the normal conditions. Okay. Now see, now that is about the normal area. So through this also you can remember. So see here, because of that what is happening, warm currents coming this side. Okay. Then again, after sometimes what happens, now after heating also warm currents, heating means what? After it, it will again come back in this area. But it, it will have the low temperature, it will cool down. So here what will happen, there will be the formation of cell. So that particular cell is known as the walker cell. So remember about the walker cell. And you all know that we, here we have the rainfall. Why we have the rainfall? Because of, because of warm current coming this side and we have the low pressure creation here, this side. So this is the Australian part. So uh, you know that equator is here. Okay. This is the Australian part. So in the North Australia, we have the high amount of rainfall. So because of that only, we have the normal condition. And this normal condition, you can also understand in the La Nina. Same condition happens. Okay. See, Walker cell will, will be easily able to understand in the parts when you see about the La Nina parts. So see in the large in the past what will happen when we have the rainfall in the this northern ocean in the northern Australia also. So because of high strong winds, see here formation of clouds will be happening. See in this past what will happen here formation of clouds will be happening. You all know it, it is a strong winds. So these clouds will spread to a longer part. Okay. In this side. So these clouds will spread to a longer part. So because of that also we have the rain in these areas. And when the strong trade winds are blowing, so what? It will do with it, it will take those rains in the our Indian side also. And when we have the large amount of rainfall, so there what we have the La Nina formation. Okay, so La Nina happens in our Indian monsoon only, not in the Australian part. This is the normal condition it is happening here. Okay, and so that also in the normal condition, you can also say that that La Nina formation also happening because in Australia region also we have the rainfall. So here we have the normal condition and La Nina formation here. Okay, and after it, when it is rising, okay, then some clouds also will be coming on this side. So here also we have rainfall. And when the warm plant is heating here, okay, so again they will be worsened back of that. So it will be forming a cell type. So that is known as the Walker cell. Okay. 
and you know that here we have the creation of high pressure so because of that only we have the desert formation there so this is about the la nino now you see about the el nino why el in the el in the what is happening see in the walker cell what is happening in the walker cell what is happening now because of that when the warm currents returning back from the these places when it is returning back from those places heating back and returning the formation of formation of low pressure creation is happening at this place okay and at this place we have the creation of warm current all those warm currents are returning back here so here what is happening because of formation of warm current here so here we have the high amount of rainfall in these areas and there we have the drought so in either in one side only we have the heavy rainfall and the drought so el nino year is what when we have we have the drought in the northern australia that is known as the el nino and that is in el nino we have the heavy rainfall in the peruvian area in the south america side so that is the drought uh, drought in the northern australia so that year is known as the el nino year then see along the coast of peru cold bottom cold current that is cold current or nutrient rich water wells up to the surface and replace the warm water that is pulled to the waste so in that that is the normal condition so in that condition so what is happening there is a emergence of cold water so when the emergence of cold water happens in what there we have the drought area okay so there there is the case of high pressure so that is about that one then walker circulation in the normal you see see the walker circulation or the walker cell is caused by the pressure gradient force okay that pressure defense will be happening results from the high pressure system over the eastern pacific ocean and a low pressure system over the indonesia so when when we have those parts that warm currents again it is returning back from there because it is heating the land surface so there again when it is returning there that side so there is the rainfall so the walker cell cell is walker cell is indirectly related to the upwelling of the coast of peru and the equator so this means that that cold water is coming up so that's what the cell formation is happening that in other walker cell then thermocline you all saw that temperature gradient in a body of water separating layers at the different temperature so that different temperature you know the thermocline and halocline is what that is salt so remember that also and all those process of la nina and el nina all those are mentioned here so because of this only we have the formation of el nino la nina and see that el nino that is also known as the and so el nino sudden oscillation because in that walker cell we have the oscillation type movement of water or current also you can say you can we have in the oscillation type like this we have the like this. so it will be rotating this type so that is known as the el nino sudden oscillation so the formation of el nino is linked with the pacific ocean circulation pattern that is known as the sudden oscillation and that is happening in oceanography that is a coherent internal annual fluctuation of atmospheric pressure okay so that we saw that when it is coming back then we have the warm heating in the polygon area so because of that we have the rainfall in those area so see all those are mentioned in this slide how the formation is happening all those are mentioned so these are the and you know when we have the la nina or el nino see and indian ocean dipole effect what is happening in indian ocean mostly we have the warm currents so because of warm currents see suppose if this is a part of africa and here you have the india here is the australia now what is happening the winds blowing from these places that warm warm with then when the warm current is blowing and when the warm that winds is coming so here what is, it is heating these places okay and you all know that when we come across the equator of the equator it reflects by the ice wall so all those rainfalls is to have have the rainfall here also and because of that wind reflection we have the rainfall in this area so because of indian ocean dipole what happened even we have the in the new year because of that indian ocean dipole we have the rainfall in this indian parts so indian ocean dipoles plays important role in the indian monsoon monsoons so remember that part so all those process see if you are not able to understand just go through all those slides and if you have any doubt you can ask for me so this was all the parts of the oceanic climatology part oceanography parts okay and some parts are there that marine resources and the unclosed see unclosed is nothing important it, it is not of that much importance you must know that that is that is providing the law for the 
like how in the land side we have that Supreme Court, like it is providing the law. So similarly, for that purpose in the ocean area, we have the unclosed. So remember that. Way. So this, these are all about the oceanography. So that's all about the oceanography. And the next class, we will start about the Indian geography. So in the Indian geography part, I will upload on the YouTube channel. So directly you all can see from there itself. Okay. And if sir allows me to take the class, okay, I'll take the class for that one. Otherwise, you all can see from the YouTube channel. Okay. In one day, I'll, I'll upload all those videos. So from there, you can clear yourself. Indian geography is not that much difficult. One thing that you must know those, all those applications parts. Okay. So that's everything I'll be discussing in those parts. So that's all for the oceanography. So, okay, now time is going to be 7 o'clock. So we'll finish up the class.